Hi everyone, today I will be going over Calc AB Unit 5. This unit is really important and goes over analyzing functions using their derivatives. If you haven't already, definitely view my previous videos to get a better understanding and also subscribe to my channel. The mean value theorem tells us that if a function is continuous and differentiable on an interval, there's a point C whose derivative equals the average rate of change. In this example with x squared, the average rate of change from negative 2 to 2 is 0, so the derivative of some point between must equal 0. In this case, it's at x equals 0. In this example problem, the first step would be finding the average rate of change, f of 6 minus f of negative 3 over 6 minus negative 3. We plug in into the function and the average rate of change is 7. Next, we find f prime and see what value of x gives us 7. Our answer is c equals 0. The extreme value theorem says a continuous function over an interval a, b has both an absolute maximum and minimum in the interval. And this basically means that it has the highest and lowest value as shown here. These points can be called critical points, which occur whenever f prime is 0 or undefined. An easy way is finding when the graph changes from increasing to decreasing, such as in these pictures. We can also find them manually by setting the derivative of a function equal to zero. We then solve and find x values of the critical points. To find intervals of increasing and decreasing, we test the values around the critical points. Using the same function, we plot the points on a number line. In each interval, plug in a random number and see if it's negative or positive. I use negative 1, negative 1 over 10, and 1 as examples. The function is increasing from negative to infinity to negative 2 over 3rd and 0 to infinity. It decreases from negative 2 thirds to 0. This is also verifiable looking at the graph. Using this number line, we can also conduct the first derivative test to find local extrema. Also called relative extrema, these tell us when there's a local minimum or maximum point. When the derivative is changing from positive to negative, we can visualize something going up then going down, causing a local highest point, which we call maxima. The opposite goes for local minima. We can say there is a maximum at x equals negative 2 thirds and a minimum at x equals 0. Be careful that critical points are all instances where the derivative is 0, but extrema only occur if the derivative changes sign at that point. Similarly, we test global extrema, which are the highest or lowest points over the whole interval. With the same function and interval negative 1, 1, our candidates would be the critical points and the endpoints. So in total, negative 1, 1, negative 2 thirds, and 0. We plug each of these into f of x, and the absolute maximum is 2. The absolute minimum would be 0. We generally refer to the y value, but you could also say that the absolute maximum occurs at x equals 1. Inflection points refer to when concavity changes. But what is concavity? Functions can be either concave up, which is a u-shape upwards, or concave down, which is a u-shape downwards. Concave up functions have a slope that is increasing, which means a positive double derivative. Concave down functions have a decreasing slope, and negative second derivatives. As shown by this graph, the function starts on the left and increases by less and less as it goes on. Somewhere after 0.5, it starts increasing more and more again as the concavity it changes. We can use the second derivative test to find inflection points, which are where the concavity of a function changes. This is basically the same as the first derivative test, but we use the second derivative. It equals to 0 at negative 1 third and we plot it again. Test values on both sides and because it changes from negative to positive, there is an inflection point at x equals negative 1 third. If the concavity doesn't change, then there is not a point of inflection. Another usage for the two derivative tests is finding extrema. We can also find them by first taking the critical points and then using the second derivative at each value. A positive second derivative is concave up, meaning an upwards u-shape and a relative minimum is achieved. The opposite goes for concave down. If it is zero, the test is inconclusive and we do not use it. 
A common question is identifying the graph of a function's derivative. Given x cubed, we can find 3x squared and further derivatives. The key is knowing that derivative is simply slope. It starts positive and gets smaller, slowly reaching zero, then increasing again. The slope is never negative. On top of that, we know that the derivative is one power lower and has the x squared shape. The slope of 3x squared is negative, zero, then positive. Since it's squared, the derivative is a straight line. This is shown by 6x. The next derivative is simply a straight line at 6 since it has a constant slope. Finally, the last derivative is 0 because the line of y equals 6 does not change at all. The last topic is applying the concept of minimums to optimization problems which commonly ask for the highest or lowest of a function. This example asks for the minimum of the sum, so we first read it out as x squared plus y squared. Next, it also gives the product, so xy equals negative 16. From the product equation, we get y equals negative 16 over x and substitute it inside. We want to minimize the sum, so we derive it and set it equal to 0. Multiply each side by x cubed and then we solve for x. We get 4 and use the product to find y equals negative 4. That's the end of unit 5. Here is a quick summary table for concavity and increasing or decreasing intervals of functions. This is definitely the main focus of the unit and will repeatedly be tested on AP exams. If you're confused, leave a comment and I'll certainly get back to you. Thanks for watching and subscribe to be notified when I post new videos.